Oh, Ooh, that's a good one. There we go. I just threw this Sally out here while I was letting my... Holy shit. That's a freaking huge one. Wow. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. That is a huge one. That might be one of the biggest ones I've ever caught out of this lake. That is a beauty. Wow. Wow. My name is Timothy Broche. I have a passion for the outdoors, family, and cooking. I embrace my primal instinct to hunt and gather. I understand how it defines me and appreciate the unparalleled food the outdoors provide. The water and woods call to me. Today's August 28th, 2022. Uh, this could likely be my last fishing trip uh, until after hunt season's over. Uh, heading out in a couple days to go for a four or five day bear hunt up north and then deer and elk and moose and trying to fill some tags this year. So uh, just wanted to get out and take a little break. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been out fishing. I'm hoping, uh, hoping to bring home some meat today. That's my primary objective as well as just get out and relax a little bit. Um, hard to say the fishing can be kind of weird this time of year, but uh, hopefully we can find some smallies, maybe a few perch and uh, gonna head down into a spot where I sometimes catch trout this time of year, although the water's so different this year, the fish are not even anywhere near close to the places they normally are. And I'm still seeing spawning beds in almost the end of August. It is the end of August, which is just insane. Um, but anyways, uh, get out here and see if we can find some fish. So I was just trolling from one spot to another. This little swim bait and a piece of prawn on it. it looks like we hooked into a nice little smallie. It's kind of a feisty one good get some more meat in the cooler that's a decent size one too wow out here in open water almost 30 feet of water but he's decent for what we've been catching this time of year anyways and a keeper. So put this guy in the cooler and see if we can do that again. <laughs> oh, these things are crazy. Oh, 
Yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. That one's a keeper. That one's a keeper. I'm just taking a little break. Been out here for a few hours now. And I got, got a few fish in the cooler. I got them bled out nice. But, and the, I've got them on ice. Keep the meat nice and cold. But because of the amount of time I've been out here, I just wanted to uh, get the guts out of them. A lot of people think that that's a beautiful fish. Wow. Catching, catching fish in the summertime, they're just going to be all muddy tasting. Which I found especially trout can be if they're in shallow, warmer water, feeding off the of stuff on the bottom. But... These bass keep them bled out, get the guts out of them, keep them on ice. Uh, the meat just is amazing. Oh, I think something grabbed that right on the, as soon as I hit the water. There we go. Coming straight toward the boat. I have no idea what it is. It's a keeper. That was cool. I seen him grab it as soon as it hit the water. Man, that one's... Didn't get time to wear him out before I got him to the boat. It's a little small. Oh, oh, that's a good one. There we go. I just threw this Sally out here while I was letting my... Holy shit. That's a freaking huge one. Wow. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. That is a huge one. That might be one of the biggest ones I've ever caught out of this lake. That is a beauty. Wow. Wow. Come on, baby. Holy shit. Whew. That is a monster. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Oh, that's got to be... That's got to be four pounds. Look at that, baby. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, what I'm using today. So I've got this watermelon seed colored red flake Sally. Um, one of the reasons, well the main reason that I, I chose this particular color is uh, because it matches the water. The water is super clear and I find on every lake's a little bit different. Um, but I find having something that they can't see really well or they just kind of see motion or something moving through the water. 
Uh, they seem to, I seem to have a lot more success with that. And then of course I just rig it up weedless. Um, Milfoil, the water's down, the milfoil's super high, so there's lots of weeds everywhere and this doesn't get hung up in the rocks of the weeds. So, um, you know, I just cast it out by fluke this morning. It was already on one of my poles and got that four pounder first cast and then the three pounder. And I don't know, I've probably caught 10 more since then. So it's working really, really well today. Um, but anyways, just a little bit be behind the reasoning for this one. And, you know, again, every lake is different. It's, it's one of the reasons that I don't talk too much about the gear that I use is just simply because, you know, I tell somebody what I'm using and they go try it and they're like, oh, that didn't work. Because every lake, every day, every morning, every evening, like sometimes you got to switch your bait up five, six times to figure out what's working. Um, but this is working really well today, so we're going to continue on. See if we can get a limit. We need three more. We're gonna clean these bass I caught today. I'm gonna to show you my, my kind of secondary way of cleaning bass if I don't have my electric fillet knife. Um, it completely debones the meat and, and you don't lose anything. It, just, it takes a little bit longer. Uh, the result is phenomenal. You get just beautiful fillets out of it. Okay, now we've got that split all the way around. What we're gonna do is just start here on the back and basically all you're doing is just following the bones. I'm gonna go right down the spine to the ribs, over the ribs. Bass do have a little bit of a, a Y bone that you gotta kinda go over the top of. But um, just take your time. You can feel the bone and the knife. Just peel this right off here. So we'll get the other side of this one done and get the other one done. I'm going to take this, rinse it off, put it in a bowl and put it in the fridge to make sure it stays cold. <clears throat> and then we're just going to chunk this up uh, when we get ready to cook dinner. One of the other things, well I got this piece of skin here. <clears throat> Spiny fish or uh, bass, perch, crappie, walleye, um, any of those kind of fish. Uh, are unlike trout and some of the other fish in the way that um, you're not going to be able to eat the skin. You can tell this stuff is super thick. Um, the scales on it are huge. You can see the scales come off when I was splitting it down the, the belly there, but you got to get the skin off um, and just run in the night between the meat and the skin is the easiest way to do that. So you can see there's virtually no meat left on this, but you can see these little bones off these ribs that you have to kind of cut around. <clears throat> and they go right out to the skin. So when you're coming out, you cut right up to the skin and then go down the other side. So this is something you need to keep your eye out for. There's some of these fish in their bellies get these little worms that grow in them. But um, you can cut them out or pull them out or whatever. It's one of the reasons that you want to make sure that the fish is cooked very thoroughly. The only place I ever see these are in the belly meat of the fish. 
I found them in a few bigger perch, smallmouth and largemouth around here. But just uh, something to watch out for. And again, make sure that you're cooking the fish all the way. You'll be fine. And the remaining fish parts make amazing fertilizer for your flower beds or gardens, strawberries, raspberries. Uh, bury them in the garden. The fish I'm going to cook tonight requires a batter. It's super simple. We're going to take a half a cup of water, a cup of flour, two eggs, and a little bit of salt. We're going to mix this all up really good. So I just got the batter all mixed up. This should come out fairly thick, but still runny. I'll give the best thickness um, for coating the fish. Okay, so the next part of this, we're going to take these fillets that we cleaned up earlier. And we're just going to chunk these up. So I'm going to hang over it, make sure there's no bone or cartilage left in there. And then we're just going to cut these up in about one inch square. Okay, so we got the meat all cubed up. And now, just to make sure we don't run out of batter, we're just going to take all of this, put it into the batter, and take a fork and just stir it up so everything's coated. And we're going to get started cooking. So, next step, um, just put about an inch of olive oil in this pan. Going to get it nice and warm. Um, and use this to cook the fish, batter the fish. Um, you can use whatever kind of oil you want, vegetable oil or grease or whatever. Um, we prefer the olive oil, it cooks it up with a nice color and, uh, and doesn't leave the food all greasy. That works well. So depending on how hot you have the oil, um, usually you cook these for, I don't know, maybe two minutes on each side. It's pretty hard to overcook the fish with this recipe, so I usually go more for uh, aesthetics and uh, trying to get a little color in the, in the batter when I'm cooking these. But if you, Turn them over and cook them on both sides. So we'll just let these cook for a couple minutes and we'll take them out and stuff them in the batch. If you haven't cooked these before, um, you do want to make sure that the meat's cooked all the way. A slight translucent look that the meat has when it's raw should be completely gone. If you want to cut a couple of these open, you just want to make sure that the white, the, the, the meat is completely white and uh, just nice and flaky. Uh, it should look like it's going to stick together anywhere. When I take them out of the oil, um, just to drip away some of the extra oil, I just take a cookie sheet and put a couple of cooling racks in and set the fish on top of there when it's done cooking. From the lake to your table, enjoy.